In this demo, I'll walk you through everything you need to know about Zscaler's Privileged Remote Access Solution for operational technology systems. I'll start with the end user experience, which is designed to provide remote workers and third party vendors with fast and direct remote desktop access to RDP and SSH systems. Then we'll walk through the admin experience, where I'll show you how easy it is to use and navigate the features of privileged remote access. Let's start with our user, Lisa. From her web browser, she'll navigate to our organization's pre configured privileged remote access end user portal, zerotrust.2. When Lisa hits this portal, she's redirected to a page where she's asked to enter her credentials, after which she'll be redirected to our organization's identity provider. Lisa provides a simple name and password, but depending on how the identity provider has been configured, she could be asked for two-factor, multi-factor, or even passwordless authentication. After successfully being authenticated, she's redirected back to the privileged remote access portal, where she's displayed a set of tiles. Here, she only sees the systems to which she's authorized. This is based on the zero trust principle of least privileged access and is designed to reduce the attack surface by removing the excessive implicit trust typically required by traditional remote access technologies like VPNs. In this scenario, Lisa has access to a Windows engineering workstation as well as a Linux jump box. And here, she's going to use the browser-based access capability in Privileged Remote Access to RDP or SSH into the systems she needs to monitor and troubleshoot for her job. Let's now watch as she connects to the workstation. A new tab is opened in her browser, and an HTML5 canvas renders an RDP session for this particular engineering workstation. Lisa enters the AD credentials for this Windows machine. She sees the desktop and she's able to interact with a thick client like an OPC UA expert, where she can connect to an OPC server that interfaces with industrial devices such as HMIs and PLCs and perform any troubleshooting, upgrade, maintenance, or patching. She can also use this engineering workstation to jump to another Windows desktop downstream. She can interact with a desktop in exactly the same way she would with a native RDP client. Using the on-screen keyboard, she can issue commands like function keys or even control alt delete. When she's done, she clicks disconnect to end the remote session and closes the browser tab. During the session, no software plugins or additional clients were required or had to be installed, removing any friction for users, particularly third-party vendors on unmanaged devices who typically have to connect using a VPN client. And just as you saw with RDP, Lisa gets the exact same easy experience starting an SSH session to access our Linux machine. She clicks on the tile and enters the machine credentials. Here, you can see this is actually a Raspberry device, but she's able to remotely connect to it using just her browser. Lisa can issue any commands as she normally would. Once she's done, she can click disconnect or issue an exit command in her console. And after that, she can close the tab and log out. Both our SSH and RDP sessions are fully isolated. So the user has no clipboard control, no copy paste, and no file uploading capabilities. This keeps remote desktop activity secure by separating the process of interacting with the machine from the user's device rendering the session. This drastically reduces the attack surface and risk of compromise by limiting the possibility of introducing malware from the user's device onto the internal network, which is very easy in operational technology environments. Now, let's turn to the admin experience, where I'll show you how quickly privileged remote access can be deployed, so there's no disruption or unplanned downtime to production processes in OT environments. First. I'll open the admin console in my browser and log into the ZeroTrust.2 tenant. Second, I'll configure the identity provider that authenticates my users. Some companies use a single identity provider like Okta or Microsoft Azure AD to store both their employee and third-party identities, while others prefer to keep the two in separate identity providers. In this case, I have one identity provider called Employees, which is using Okta to store the identities for all users with a ZeroTrust.2 email domain. I have a second identity provider called Contractors, which is using AuthO. 
Next, I'll establish Zscaler app connectors between my internal resources and the Zscaler private access cloud, which acts as a SaaS orchestration plane or switchboard where we terminate communications and broker outbound connections from an app connector to an authorized user. Here, I have three instances of app connectors. These are used for high availability as well as to support high concurrency use cases and are all tied to a single app connector group. App connectors are deployed as Docker containers, which makes them easy to install in OT environments. The next step is to configure app segments like our engineering workstation and jump box. For the workstation, I'll specify the internal domain name or IP address, RDP as the protocol, and port 3389, which is the default for RDP. For the SSH jump box, I'll follow the same steps and specify the domain, SSH as the protocol, and port 22. Next, I'll tie our app segments together into the Zscaler privilege portal and privilege consoles. For this, you'll need to have an authoritative DNS server to map a fully qualified domain name to the internal Zscaler private access CNAME. Along with the DNS entry in a DNS provider, I'll also need to create an associated certificate for this common name, portal.0 trust.2. Lastly, I'll need to add the app segments as privilege consoles within the privilege portal. This is done very simply by mapping each app segment to the zero trust.2 portal. So with these five steps, I've stood up a fully operational privileged remote access portal and privileged consoles for RDP and SSH.